Off we'll tease off segment, and we are very pleased to have with us today from Toronto, Canada, Lauren Rubenstein, the golf columnist for Globesports.com and the co-author of a new book entitled A Disorderly Compendium of Golf. And here in Orlando, Florida, Ken Carpenter joins us, the editor of the GolfGazette.com. Lauren, let's start with you. Will Nick Fowler become as controversial as Johnny Miller in the broadcast booth? Well, I don't think, Brian, that he'll become intentionally controversial, but if Nick just lets himself be, he can't help but be controversial because he just speaks uh, really just out of both corners of his mouth. He knows the game cold. Whether he'll say on the Masters, if it rains like it did a few years ago and if the place is all muddy, that it smells like a, a pig farm on CBS, we'll see. He said that in the press room, as I recall, but uh, I think it's going to be great. I'm really looking forward to him being so involved in the game. Well, that could get Nick a vacation from the Masters for a few years. Ken, what do you <laughs> think? Right. I've already always enjoyed Nick Faldo. I think he has an inter interesting perspective, and uh, he's certainly going to get a chance to be as controversial as NBC's uh, Johnny Miller. Ken, are the World Golf Championships good or bad for the PGA Tour? Well, I think they're good for the world of golf, and they're good for certain golf markets like Northeast Ohio, but I'm not sure they're good for the PGA Tour. Everything that comes negative out of those events has to do with PGA Tour players. We had controversy when they didn't go to Australia. They want all the events to be in the U.S. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if the Tour needs them, but the world of golf needs them. Lauren, what do you think? Well, I think they've diminished in time over the years, particularly with the FedEx coming, Cup coming next year. I don't think they'll be as important. There are so many top events. The majors are so important. I also think that uh, while it's great to see the top players uh, in a limited field event, they're going to hurt the tournaments around them. For example, up here, the Canadian Open uh, next year is sandwiched between the British Open and a World Golf Championships event, and that's not going to help the Canadian Open at all, and there are other events in the same situation. Lauren, how important is the Varden Trophy to Tiger Woods? Do you think he will play Disney and end up qualifying and therefore winning the Varden Trophy? I don't think it's all that important to him. He knows what kind of a year he's had, and I don't really think he'll play that extra event, probably the Disney, even though he lives in Orlando, just to, just to get the Varden, which he would win easily. Um, I wouldn't, uh, he may surprise us, but I don't think he'll play it. Ken, do you think we'll see Tiger at Disney? I think we will. I, that week for him is sort of like uh, fraternity week. He brings all the guys in from, uh, from his past, Nota Begay and the, and the troops staying at the house, and they all head to, head to the coffee shop in the morning and out to the golf course afterward. I think he'll play. He's right here. He's done well at that event. And I don't know if, if, if he'll play just to win the Varden. He'll just play because it's here in town. Ken, let's switch our, our thoughts now to Europe, where Paul Casey and David Howell are currently one and two in the order of merit. Who's going to win the money title over there? Well, I think it's up, up for grabs, Brian. I mean, Casey was peaking prior to the uh, to Ryder Cup. He had a fantastic lead into that, and, but then he finished next to last in the American Express Championship. Uh, David Howell, I understand, has a shoulder injury, so those guys are 1-2. In third place, Robert Carlson, he's already played 27 events. If he plays the last three, 30 events, that's a big, big schedule for a touring pro these days. Lauren, who do you like in Europe? I think Casey's going to win, and he'll hold on. He seems to be on a roll right now, having won the world match play and, of course, playing well in the uh, Ryder Cup. And uh, he seems to have gotten over those problems of a few years ago on the PGA Tour when he said a few things that uh, he was going to properly hate the U.S. during the Ryder Cup. And I just think he's so confident right now. I think he'll close out the year and, and win uh, on the European Tour. Lauren, one final question for you, you being the expert on Mike Weir in Canada. How do you think he's going to fare, how do you think he's going to play coming off that injury as he battles for a spot in the Tour Championship? Mike's a tough guy. He's always recovered any time he's had any adversity in his career, and I expect he's going to recover from this. And I think some of Mike's best golf is still ahead of him. I really do. All right, Lauren Rubenstein, Ken Carpenter, thank you both. Now let's send you over to Kelly Tillman. When we come back, Jock Terry will inspire.